You're still watching ways. The International Day commemorating the victims of acts of violence based on religion or belief is observed on 22nd August every year. It was proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly in 2011 following the adoption of a resolution that called for a day to be dedicated to the victims of such acts. The day is an opportunity to remember and honor the victims of violence based on religion or belief and to reaffirm the commitment to protecting the right to freedom of religion or belief. It is also a time to raise awareness of the issue and to call for action to prevent such violence from happening again. Guys, what do you think? Yeah, I think religion is very individualistic yeah. mm. and um, it, is, it is a human right. Mm. People should be allowed to practice whatever religion they want they to, want to yeah. as long as it is not um, endangering other people. Mm. You know, I have the right to, my, to whatever spiritual beliefs that I, I want to you know, adhere to. I know we've had some cases here in Nigeria oh, where yeah. some people were lynched or burned yeah. to death or yeah. even beaten. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like the Alu Fort. Yeah. 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 So mm. things like that, right? Especially when it comes to your religion. Mm. We know some of these religions that you feel, they feel like, oh, you can say some certain things. And mm. because you have, you have blasphemed, they took the law into their own mm. hands. Mm. And in situations like that, it, it just, it, it appalls me because I'm like, wait, is this what your creator has taught you to do? You just mm -hmm. decide, you know what, you said something, I'm not comfortable with it, yeah. I don't like it, it yeah. doesn't align with my religion, then I'm going to beat you, I get I'm going violent. to kill you, mm -hmm. right? And having those kind of situations here in Nigeria, I feel like the government needs to start doing something. Absolutely. Right? Because mm -hmm. most times what I see is them putting out a statement on Twitter saying, oh, we, we don't condone, condone this behavior. Mm -hmm. You don't condone mm -hmm. it, but somebody needs to get arrested. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to face the law for what they have done. Use somebody as a scapegoat so that other people would stop doing would stop mm -hmm. doing that. Mm -hmm. But Isi is joining us. Hi, Isi. Can you hear us? Hi, Jennifer. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> good to see you. Well, thank you. <laughs> and How's Jennifer, good? well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So before we jump into what our news is for today, you see, how's your day been? Ah, uh, you don't want to know. Like Norma always says, we, we don't look like what we've been oh, through, yeah. honestly. <laughs> it's been a long one for me to be candid. Oh. I'm just, you know, ready to, you know, roll with the ways ladies. And it's good to be back. I enjoyed the teen... Um, a hangout with us last week. Yeah, we all did. We all did. Well, it's good to have you, and I love that you're smiling. So keep it up. <laughs> well, let's start with you. What did you find for us in the news? Uh, my news isn't so good. However, it's something that we need to know. Um, I actually chose this uh, top, uh, chose this news because uh, it resonated with me due to the fact that we need to hold our youth accountable. And the, the headline is, my father's murder pushed me into crime, says a suspect. And his name is uh, Abdullahi Adamu, who is a motorcycle rider. He said that he became involved in kidnapping following the tragic murder of his father by arm robbers. Now, I, I know that this is really sad. It's something that has happened. And... Um, uh, my condolences to him that he lost his father through such, such a tragic incident. However, we need to also hold us, the youths, accountable. This story, I'm, I'm taking the story based on the fact that I'm looking at it from the humanistic point of view, where we need to understand that we have choices. Our choices determine what we, the steps we take. And if we, if we decide to you know, do what is right. We all know what is right. We all know what we're supposed to do. The fact that he lost his father through such a, um, a tragic incident didn't mean that he should go around and hurting others as well. So it's something that we also need to, you know, put into perspective as youth of, of Nigeria, that we need to step up and make the right decisions to suit what is expected of us as humans, not as citizens, but as humans. Now, in terms of education, I am looking at it from the perspective of the fact that 
the education sector needs to put more um, attention into skills acquisition. We've always had this concept of individuals being functional because that's the whole essence of having an education, being a functional individual in the society. I'm sure that if he had had some sort of skill set in, in one way or the other, he would have been able to, you know, survive the terrain he has found himself in in Nigeria. Because, you know, living in Nigeria is hard. You know, you can't take it from us. It's hard. So you need to have some basic skill set to survive. Yeah. It's not just about you going to school, but you should have some sort of skill set. You can be a technical person, you can be a mechanic, you can be anything, so long as it puts food on your table. And again, we need to understand that hard work and um, smart work also pays. So it's important that we as the youth of Nigeria need to take this into perspective. Our choices should be the right one. We all know what is right. We should try to abstain from the wrong and stick to the positives and not the negatives. Thank you, Isi. Thank you. Um, that's a really sad story. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, at some point in our lives, right, we need to start holding ourselves accountable. We right. need to stop using some things as excuses for bad yeah. behavior. Mm -hmm. Sansi, what did you find for us? All right. So, um, in alignment with uh, what um, what today is, which is International Violence Awareness Day yeah, and yeah. all that. So, I picked up the story about uh, the Chibok girl that was abducted back in 2014. Yeah. So she's one of the uh, uh, she's one of the batch that was rescued uh, sometime in August yeah. uh, August 14. That's this month. And so. Um, so here is the interesting thing about this rescue. She says, I am still in love with my Boko Haram husband. Mm -hmm. So she was abducted about the time she was, let's say, 16. She got married, had two kids. Both of them died out of malnutrition. And now she has been rescued. But then she's also crying out, saying that she misses her husband. And her husband, who is Adamu, he surrendered earlier um yeah. yeah earlier in the year so she's like if she had her way she would want to go back to him mm -hmm. so now the question is i'm not sure there, there is a pattern that we are starting to see but i think most people are starting are, are ignoring it or like people who can act on it are ignoring it the, the, and the thing is the bonding between a victim and um a captive yeah. so like there's this trauma bonding that you feel that oh now they give me food they give me everything i want and so, so that makes exactly so that makes them my ally right now yeah. you know i think we, we really need to look into that mental uh, awareness or mental health yeah because yeah. it's i mean but also looking at the other hand we also see that somebody can be deemed bad but then they can also be good to another person. So it's Absolutely. kind of a dicey place. I don't know what's going on in her head right now, but I feel like um, she needs therapy to understand mm -hmm. if that is a victim mentality or if she really loves this guy. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a dicey place. Stockholm syndrome is yeah, a thing. It, it, and it, is. it plays out. It plays out in a lot of ways. ways. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Because even women that are in marriages mm -hmm. and their husbands are abusers mm -hmm. or men that their wives are abusers and they stay for a certain reason. Sometimes you try to get them out, they come mm -hmm. out and it's like, oh, I really want to go back. Yeah. Right? It's actually Stockholm syndrome where you think you've invested yeah, a lot. It's time. not just You're, investment. Yeah. You think you think you are in love with your abuser, mm. right? You feel like they are your protector. Mm. And sometimes, even when the abuse is still ongoing, mm. you feel like they are doing it out of love. Mm -hmm. I also think that sometimes it is because, you see, it, when you're, you're, the human brain and the mind, mm -hmm. there's a way it works. Yeah. Sometimes when you are in a situation, it tries to protect you. So your brain is telling you you're, you're only seeing, I mean, you're isolated from everything else. Mm -hmm. This is the only person, it's almost like this person is focused on you. Yeah. He's married to you. He comes home to you. you. There is no other person you're talking to. This is the one person you're bonding with. Mm -hmm. After a while, your brain begins to tell you something different. Yeah. And you, it's, it's almost like 
a fine line. Mm. But I honestly, I agree with you. I mean, there's a lot of therapy that needs to be done, but, you know. Yeah, sorry. I mean, I know we need to move mm. on to the next mm. story, but I kind of had a thought right now. Do you think this is what we experience in Nigerian politics, where we obviously know someone is bad, but because the person, <laughs> hold on, but because the person has been good to maybe a family member <laughs> or a friend, the friend comes out telling everybody that, oh, he's been kind to me, so that makes him good. Course. That's of the entire <laughs> millions of people who know this person is bad. Isn't that Stockholm Syndrome, Nigeria? It, 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 it's funny. It's funny. Yeah. yeah. I'm just, I'm just bond. You can't tell the difference between being having a bond with someone or whether you are in bondage with that person. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. there is a difference. Yeah. You can't really tell. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it, it's messed up. It's messed up. Yeah, Jenna, what about you? Okay, so this one um, is um, Nigerian students facing hardship in northern Cyprus. Mm. It's a really, I don't even know what to make of this. Um, so apparently, um, this um, global non governmental organization executive committee revealed that um, Nigerian students in Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. They have um, issues with um, the CBN money transfer policy. Yeah. And a lot of them have not been able to pay their fees. They've not been able to pay their rent. Of course, when a lot of them are probably minors, you know, especially those um, freshmen or people just doing undergrad or people getting money from Nigeria, you know. So when their folks from here sent money to them, it doesn't get to them on time. The universities are complaining because, I mean, if you their system is not like here, there's mm -hmm. nobody for you to go and beg, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you know. So, um, I mean, so it's led to a whole lot of them feeling abandoned, mm. um, feeling um, like um, homeless, mm. you know, being homeless. Because, I mean, in you also have to understand that in some of these countries, as students, you are unable to work, you know. Um, so, of course, if you can't pay your rent, you would probably have to leave um, the, 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 your, your house, mm -hmm. and then you can sit for exams. So again, this, this, this is rather sad because I can imagine how much it would have taken them to go all the way to that kind of place to go school just because they want a better life for themselves. And the problem is not that there are no funds for them to pay. The problem is the funds are not getting to them on time because there is some policy in place, you know, dealing with um, remittances from out of Nigeria. Mm. So it's almost like, okay, so is there, I, I, I don't know if um, this is out of place, but um, it would be really nice for the apex um, financial institution in Nigeria to look into this matter. I mean, it, 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 it takes a whole lot. Yeah to take a child out of the country to say, okay, mm -hmm. you don't want to go study abroad. Yeah. And then some of the reasons why these students go is because you don't want to do five years for a three-year course. Mm -hmm. So that's still going to happen to them if they go abroad and then if they keep having this kind of issue. Because it means that you'll probably have to defer your admission until you're able to pay, make up. And so it's, it's, it almost feels like a mess. But I'm hoping, I mean, this um, report says that um, they have reached out to... Um, the government and they're hoping that the government can wade in and then um you know foster a much more um you know a much more open um relationship yeah. with the country yeah. and then address this issue for the students i'm really hoping so for their sake well yeah we're hopeful, hopeful. <laughs> Very hopeful. Yeah. anyway um so for me my news is um so in Nigeria, there's a survey that was carried out where mm -hmm. they said that in Nigeria that they have reasons why husbands beat their wives. So the report showed that 40.98% of adults in the Northeast agreed to beating in their marriages. Now, out of these 40.98, 23.17% are women who support beatings from their husbands. For the five reasons which um which they they mentioned and i'm just going to rushly or quickly list out these reasons mm -hmm. you have burning the food so when you burn food that means you're you entitled, share, to, you're be entitled to be beaten when you argue with your husband when you go out without telling him when you neglect the children and then also when you refuse to have sexual intercourse with your husband that's the craziest list ever. Like, in the list of lists, 
that's the craziest <laughs> list. Like, again, culture plays a very key. Uh, culture, you see, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot give what you don't have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, you, you're a product of conditioning. Mm. You're a product of narratives, and unfortunately, if you do not know better. You think that is the right way. Yeah. This is what some of these, they've seen their mothers, their grandmothers mm -hmm. go through it. Mm -hmm. So they assume this is the natural thing. So if you go talking to them and say, this is downright crazy, they're going to look at you like, you're the crazy person. Like, mm -hmm. what, what are you saying? Oh, these are the women that don't stay in husband's mm -hmm. houses. That, that, that's, that's the next thing you're yeah, going to hear. Yeah, you, yeah. You understand? Again, in the, in the West here, Outside of even education, that you would even think, oh, you know, people are quite exposed in this part of Nigeria, you will still be surprised that some people are still believe that it is okay to have physical violence in the homes, like, like suffer this kind of violence. They'll yeah, tell mm -hmm. you, ah, if my husband is talking, I'm not supposed to be talking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, my husband has the... He owns me. The minute he married me, he owns me. So he has the right to be... In fact, there was a weird one I, I, I saw recently that um, a, a, a woman that her husband does not beat, the husband doesn't love, love her. Exactly. No, that's crazy. And I don't know what to say Because, you that. see, things like this, we often ask women, or we, are, we often ask, why, why is it that we have more women who are single these days? Yeah. And the truth is, most women are becoming aware. There yeah. is International yeah. Girls' Day and yeah. all what. So there is a lot of empowerment, and, and you can't empower someone for them to fall back to these harrowing traditional beliefs or whatever Absolutely. it's called, right? So... At the end of the day, like I can't imagine myself, even even if I was a northerner or a southerner or wherever these laws are happening, I can't I can't go back to that. I would rather stay single than get myself entangled with a man who would beat me for burning food. Yeah. Like, hello. Hi. <laughs> there, 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 crazy. Needs, there needs to be more awareness so that yeah. a lot of people know that this is not the way to live life. Yeah. Right? There's so much more to life than uh -huh. all of these that is happening in marriage. There's even so much more to marriage. Yes. But anyway, let's go on a short break. We'll be right back.